Hey guys, welcome back to another iHeart Fall episode. And today I'm gonna show you guys my take on some classic hearty fall time soups. And if you guys do enjoy today's video, please give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing before you leave. First up, we're making an apple cheddar and beer soup. The most work we're gonna be doing is chopping our ingredients. You're gonna need onions, potatoes, and of course, apples. I love using honey crisp apples for this. And I just go ahead and chop and peel everything. I go ahead and start by putting my Instant Pot on the saute setting so that I can go ahead and saute my onions. And I used ghee as my oil, but feel free to use olive oil. I season it with some sea salt and a little bit of pepper and I go ahead and just saute those for about three to five minutes. And now we can go ahead and start adding our chopped apples. And you just want to brown those for about one to two minutes with the onions. And now we can add some minced garlic. The garlic only needs to be in there for about one minute, just until you can start to smell it. And the last thing that goes into the pot before we add our liquid is the potatoes and now we're gonna go ahead and pressure cook the potatoes but because we're using an instant pot we do have to go ahead and add our liquid so I'm using beer and chicken bone broth I'm also adding some Worcestershire sauce and Dijon mustard for flavor then I'm just gonna give everything a quick little mix and now it is time to pressure cook so that we can soften the potatoes I find that six minutes on high is the perfect amount and then I just do a quick release on the pressure once those six minutes are up which is just the right amount of time to go ahead and start grating my cheese I recommend extra sharp cheddar we're gonna be using most of it. I did set just a tiny bit aside so that I could use it for garnish at the very end. Now our potatoes are fully cooked after the full six minutes were up. And as you can see, they're nice and soft. So now what we're gonna do is let that simmer for about 15 minutes so that it can kind of uh, condense a little bit. And, and also we can let that alcohol from the beer evaporate. And after the 15 minutes are up, we're gonna go ahead and add our milk. And we're gonna start to blend everything together and make it super creamy. So I'm using a hand immersion blender, but if you don't have one of these, you can carefully ladle all of those ingredients into a blender and then blend it and then pour it back into the pan. So now once everything is nice and smooth, this is when we add the cheese. You wanna make sure your Instant Pot is turned either off or you have it on the warm setting because you do not want your liquids to boil. And you're gonna add the cheese a little bit at a time, making sure to mix it really well every time so that that cheese melts really nicely into your soup and you don't get clumps. Now, once your cheese is in, this is when we're going to taste it and see if it needs salt. And then at the very end, I do like to add a splash of buffalo hot sauce. I feel like this just ties everything together and beautifully. It does not make it spicy whatsoever. It just adds that extra bit of acidity that just makes everything taste amazing. If you guys have ever been to the melting pot or you had like um, the cheddar beer fondue, this is kind of what this tastes like, but in a drinkable version. And trust me guys, it is so good. So I definitely recommend serving this with a little bit of sprinkled cheese on top, some crispy onions, some extra apples for some crunch, and then maybe like a side of pretzels. I feel like that would be really good, like pretzel bread. Absolutely delicious. You could also serve it with like a grilled cheese sandwich. Um, the possibilities are endless and I promise you guys, if you're a cheese lover, you're gonna love this. Next, we're making something a little bit lighter. This is lemon orzo soup. You do have to do a little bit more chopping than we did in the last soup, but once you have all of your ingredients chopped up, it's just a matter of letting our Instant Pot do all the work. Like I said, in all the recipes, instead of using regular chicken stock, I am using chicken bone broth. And I wanted to show you guys the one that I used. Um, it has an illustration in the back telling you what they simmer the chicken bones with. So I feel like it has so much more flavor than regular chicken stock. So I went ahead and put it on the saute setting and once the pan is completely hot, I'm gonna add my olive oil, carrots, onions, and celery. And I'm just seasoning that with some sea salt to extract some flavor and I'm gonna go ahead and saute that for about three to five minutes or until the onions are nice and translucent. Now we can go ahead and add our garlic and just let that saute for one to two minutes or until you can start to smell that garlic, you know that all the flavors are being released. And you guys see how the pan is starting to form like this brownish crust from all the veggies? This is exactly what you want because now we're going to deglaze it with that chicken bone broth. We're just gonna add a splash of it, enough to kind of help all of those brown bits be removed and lifted from the pan. So now it is time to cook our orzo. If we also wanted to add like potato or carrots to this, then you could also add it at this moment. 
So I go ahead and get that started and just set my pressure cooker to six minutes. It is that simple. As soon as the timer goes off, I go ahead and do a quick release on the pressure. By the way, you guys, I'm giving one of these instant pots away in this video. So if you guys wanna find out how to win it, just check the info box. Now for some flavor, we're gonna be adding some fresh dill and fresh thyme. And I'm basically cutting it up really finely and I'm gonna go ahead and add that to our mixture. As you can see, the pasta, everything is fully cooked. And I do have the Instant Pot set to the warm setting, by the way. You do not want your soup to boil anymore. This next part is what I feel like makes the entire recipe just absolutely delicious. So we're gonna be taking some eggs and we're gonna whisk that really fast for about 30 seconds until the egg starts to kind of foam up a little bit. We're gonna add our lemon juice into the eggs and then we're gonna go ahead and temper the eggs. All this means is we're going to bring the temperature of the eggs up by adding the hot liquid slowly into the egg mixture. So as you can see, I'm just taking a ladle at a time and pouring that into our eggs, mixing it. And I basically continue doing this for about five or six ladles. And this is what's going to thicken our soup and give it that super rich consistency. Now that our eggs are tempered, we're gonna go ahead and pour that mixture back into our soup. Now for some finishing touches, I love zesting a whole lemon in there. I feel like this really brightens up all of those flavors nicely. And then I like finishing it off with two different types of salt. Um, one is celery salt and the other one is garlic salt. You basically just add it a little bit at a time until you feel that the salt content is perfect. But that's it you guys, this soup is ready to serve and I like to top it with a little bit of extra dill and also some lemon wedges. The last soup is a butternut with brown butter maple soup. Wow, that was a mouthful, but you guys, the soup is like the epitome of fall time. So we are gonna be using our instant pot for this one as well, but we're gonna take one additional step and we're gonna be roasting our garlic and our butternut squash. This is going to take our flavor profile to another level and it's going to cut down on the peeling and chopping time because have you ever tried peeling and chopping a raw butternut squash? It's not fun. This way you can literally throw the entire butternut squash in the oven whole exactly the way it is for a full hour. And when this is done cooking, you guys, you can literally squeeze the garlic out. As you guys can see, it does not look very pretty. I'm sorry. And you can slice that butternut squash in half, scoop out the seeds, and then scoop out all of the good stuff and just set that aside for our soup. But you guys can see it is so, so easy. Now to actually make the soup, we're gonna start in our Instant Pot on the saute version. Um, you can use either prosciutto or pancetta. I am using prosciutto in this video, but I actually prefer the way that pancetta tastes. So it's up to you, you can use either one. So you wanna wait for that to release its own oils because we're gonna be using those oils to saute our onions. Just saute them until they're nice and translucent. Now we see that beautiful brown crust forming on the bottom of the pan. We're gonna deglaze that with some chicken bone broth to release all that flavor. And now we can go ahead and start cooking our potatoes and sweet potatoes. So I go ahead and add those to the pan, add the rest of my chicken bone broth and the rest of the seasonings, which includes sea salt, white pepper, a tiny bit of cayenne pepper, and a sprinkle of cinnamon. And now we can go ahead and pressure cook that so that the potatoes get nice and soft. And again, we're pressure cooking it for six minutes on high. And we're just gonna do a quick release on the pressure once those six minutes are up. Okay, now it is time to add our butternut squash and our roasted garlic into our soup mixture. We're gonna go ahead and take an orange and zest half of it into the soup to add a little bit of brightness. And now it's time to blend everything. So I'm using my hand blender, but again, you can scoop everything into a regular blender and then just blend it until smooth. At this point, it is done, so you can turn your Instant Pot off and keep it on the warm position. Now it is time for the finishing touch, and again, this is one of those steps that just makes the entire soup. And I would do this right before you're getting ready to serve everybody, um, especially if you're hosting like a dinner party. This is like a really fun presentation. You're gonna turn your stove to medium heat, and you're gonna add some salted butter to it. 
and let that cook for about two to three minutes or until your butter turns brown. As soon as your butter turns brown, turn the stove off and add your maple syrup and just give it a good mix and immediately transfer it into a serving bowl. And we're gonna be adding a drizzle of this on top of our soup after it's served. And you guys, it is to die for. So I recommend serving this with a dollop of sour cream for some creaminess, some pumpkin seeds for some crunch, and some extra pancetta for some saltiness. And then we add our drizzle of brown butter maple on top. And then you swirl those flavors together and it is seriously like fall in your mouth. And I just absolutely love the fact that the maple butter is served separately because I personally like a more savory soup. So I can really control the amount of sweetness that goes into it. So those are my three soups. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Again, all the recipes, ingredients, everything is down below. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.